Here's what to remember. Frequent conflict has resulted in new and progressively improved Merkava tanks. The tank was unlike anything fielded by other armies, particularly the United States and Soviet Union. The Merkava first saw action in 1982, when it fought Soviet-made Syrian T-72 tanks in the Bekaa Valley. Merkavas destroyed several 8T-72s at ranges of up to 4,000 meters, without loss to a single T-72. In the past 40 years, just a handful of countries have proved themselves capable of building their own main battle tanks. One of these tank powers is actually one of the smallest countries in the world, Israel. Israel's main battle tank, the Merkava series, is one of the best designed tanks ever produced. Israel's independence in 1948 saw the formation of the Israeli Defense Forces, and the IDF cobbled together a modest, ramshackle tank force to repel attacks from neighboring Arab countries. By the 1956 war the situation had improved considerably, and by 1967 Israel's armored corps basically won the Six-Day War with a blitz across the Sinai Peninsula and into the Golan Heights. The tanks, American M48 and British Centurion tanks, crushed the opposition and brought a quick end to the war. Israel's preemptive attack on its neighbors was not popular with some of its European allies. The United Kingdom cancelled a joint tank development project with Israel. France embargoed further deliveries of Mirage fighter jets and missile boats. The lesson for Israel was to decrease its reliance on foreign powers for its armaments, and in 1970 the IDF began to develop a tank of its own. The job of making an Israeli tank a reality fell to Major General Israel Tal, former commander of the IDF Armored Corps and who led the 84th Armored Division to victory in the Sinai. Tal's project was a major challenge, as Israel's military-industrial complex was in its infancy and the country had never built a large armored vehicle before. Working from a clean sheet, Tal could build a tank from the ground up with Israel's tank warfare experiences baked in. Three attributes define a modern tank. Firepower, the main gun, mobility, speed and cross-country operation, and protection, armor. Some tank-building countries emphasize one or two attributes over the other. In Israel's case, Tall prioritized protection over all else. Israel's small size meant that it felt even modest wartime deaths at Cuba, and an emphasis on protection would keep personnel losses down. Protection also meant that tank crews could survive to fight again, allowing tankers to survive to continue to utilize their training and act on their experience. The Israeli tank would next prioritize firepower because, survival aside, the only way to win a war was to destroy enemy tanks. Mobility was last, as a small country, Israel was not likely to fight long campaigns over great distances. The Israeli tank's emphasis on protection manifested itself in several ways. The tank featured thick spaced armor of a local design, and the hull and turret were designed with sharp angles meant to increase armor thickness through sloping. This gave the tank a sleek, futuristic look. Breaking with tank convention, the engine and transmission were located in the front of the tank, giving the crew extra protection if an anti-tank round penetrated the frontal armor. Hydraulic turret control, which used a flammable fluid that burned many Israeli tankers in the 1973 war, was replaced with an electric control system, and ammunition was stored in fireproof canisters until used to minimize the likelihood of an ammunition explosion. The tank's main gun was the 105mm M68 main gun, the same gun that appeared on the IDF Centurion, Patton and M60 tanks. The tank carried 62 rounds for the main gun, slightly above average, to ensure the tank could fight through ammunition supply shortages. The tank had three machine guns, including one coaxial 7.62mm machine gun paired with the main gun and additional 12.7 and 7.62mm machine guns up top for the commander and loader. These were useful for engaging enemy infantry, soft-skinned vehicles and anti-tank missile teams, such as the at 3 Sagar crews that took a heavy toll in the 1973 Yom Kippur War. A burst of machine gun fire over the heads of a missile operator could throw a command-operated anti-tank missile off course, saving a tank and its crew. Mobility was the lowest of the three priorities for the Israeli tank, and the tank used just a 900-horsepower diesel engine to power a 63-ton hull, for a horsepower-to-weight ratio of 14.5 to 1. As a result the Merkava had a relatively sluggish top speed of just 28 miles an hour. This was in contrast to the American M1 Abrams, 
which had a set top speed of 45 miles an hour and had a horsepower to weight ratio of 25 to 1.